If you remember from our discussion on the ellipse, uh, when we discovered the focal property that the sum of those two distances is constant, we saw that that dis uh, description of the focal property is maintained in the circle, except that the two focus points or the foci are on top of each other. And so that distance from one focus point to the circumference, to the circumference, to the other focus point, which is the same point, uh, is going to be constant. It's just going to be twice the radius, uh, which is the major axis for the diameter, right? Uh, we see that uh, when we get here to the parabola, that same focal property is technically preserved, but in a kind of weird way. And to imagine this, uh, I want you to think about something that I'm sure you've all had contact with, that of a flashlight. If you ever wondered why a flashlight is, uh, the inside of, the of a flashlight is shaped the way that it is, the inside that, that um, the curved part where the light bulb is, is approximately a paraboloid. That is a three-dimensional parabola, basically a parabola that is spun around in three-dimensional space. Uh, so it makes a little cup, right? The light bulb then is placed in approximately the focus point of that paraboloid, right? Um, and here's why. Because that same property that we saw in the ellipse and technically in the circle is still maintained for the parabola. Now imagine that this focus point is a light bulb, and you know how uh, light bulbs work, uh, you know, light emanates out, um, but it goes in all directions. Now, with the ellipse, as we saw uh, with the, the perfectly elliptical room, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, and so it's going to bounce off the wall and, and go for the other focus point. The same is true for the parabola. So if we take a particle of light or a wave, whichever camp you fall into, technically the two camps are one, but whatever. Uh, if we take a particle of light and we shoot it out from the focus point to uh, the, the parabola, it's going to reflect and head straight for the other focus point. But that other focus point is infinitely far away. It's going to go like that forever. Meanwhile, another particle of light is going to go up here and bounce, and it's also going to make its way to that other focus point. Likewise, this particle of light is going to bounce, and this one this one. All of these particles of light are bouncing off of the parabola and then going down parallel to each other, not intersecting. Technically, there's one like that. And heading towards that other focus point. They're trying to get to that other focus point. But obviously, their, their paths aren't going to cross, so they, they must be parallel, and they're all heading towards that other focus point, which is infinitely far away. Knowing this property is why flashlights are shaped the way they are. This is a brilliant design. If you put the, the light bulb in a, uh, approximately in the, the position of the focus point, that means that no light is wasted. Every light that comes out of this light bulb is bouncing off of that reflective paraboloid, which is in the flashlight, and going out. It's going towards that other focus point. Now, obviously, not all flashlights are perfect paraboloids, and so that's why you know that they're not all going to be just you know straight beams of light. Um, but the more powerful ones are closer to this, right? If you if you look, take a look at like a mag light versus like a dollar light that you can buy at Walmart. Um, you can see that a mag light can shine very far because all of the light particles are focused and, and uh, on in, in one direction. The light bulb is closer to the focus point. But if you get a cheapo flashlight, some of the light's not going to be used efficiently. Uh, and you, you, there are also some that have more like a disco ball on the inside rather than a smooth para uh, parabolic surface. Uh, but anyways, but this is why it's shaped this way. It's not just any curve. It is 
parabolic in order to get the most use out of all of the light. As it bounces off that reflective mirror, uh, which is in the paraboloid, all the light is cast out to where you want to illuminate. I really love that. Now, think about this same process, this same ingenious design backwards, and you will have discovered what Archimedes did in the battle, uh, in a battle, I, I think it was the battle series, I'm going to have to look it up and I'll put it in the notes maybe. Um, Archimedes, centuries ago, discovered this focal property of the, par of the parabola and used it to make something rather clever, which Again, uh, you may have actually used in your own life, but you didn't really know why it was working. Um, if you've ever had a magnifying glass and you've found some ants outside on the sidewalk um, and you hold it up just right to focus all the light uh, into one single beam and then you can catch the, the ants on fire, what you're essentially doing is using this property. The, the shape of the lens for a magnifying glass is parabolic. Uh, and so you can then capture all of that light and focus it through the focal point. And this is exactly what Archimedes did centuries ago. Archimedes was uh, a mathematician, a brilliant mathematician, um, and what he did for the king, reluctantly, he didn't really want to use mathematics in this way, but he was kind of forced to, uh, is that he made war machines. He made a giant parabolic mirror. Um, sorry, that's kind of shaped the wrong way. Or it's facing the wrong way, rather. He made a parabolic mirror so that the sun, oops, this is all the same thing again, which is shining up in the sky, it's sending down its uh, beams of light down into uh, into the mirror. All of that sunlight, let's get a different color. All of that sunlight is coming into the mirror and it's bouncing around the mirror and then it's being refocused or uh, you know bouncing in and being refocused and is concentrated into a single beam of light. And he can direct that beam of light wherever he wants, even to the sails of a ship of the enemy off the coast and catching them on fire. Archimedes used a parabolic mirror to capture the sunlight, focus it into a single beam, and then lit ships on fire while they're away from the island uh, at sea. This was obviously very frightening. Imagine being on a boat and having it spontaneously combust. Um, but he used mathematics. He used this mathematical property of the parabola to help defend Syracuse. He lit ships on fire from a distance. You know, we thought we were pretty cool when we were able to light a, a, an ant on fire with a magnifying glass, but imagine lighting an entire boat on fire with a mirror. That is pretty awesome. Uh, so Archimedes, one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, uh, discovered that this property and was able to, to manufacture this war machine and used it to uh, help Syracuse win at least that battle. Sadly, uh, later down the road, uh, they end up being overrun, and the commander, I think it was the Roman army, the commander said to his soldiers to keep Archimedes alive. When you find Archimedes, do not kill him, uh, take him prisoner, because I want him to build war machines for me. Uh, but then a soldier came into Archimedes' study, and Archimedes like could not be bothered. He was just staring at this drawing that he had made in the sand, uh, and he was just deep in thought about this problem. Um, and the Roman soldier came over, he stood in his drawing, and Archimedes was just like, dude, get out of here, like, can you see I'm working? Um, and then the Roman soldier ordered him to get up and go with him, and he's like, no, I'm, 
I'm working right now. Please, I have better things to do. Uh, the Roman soldier took offense at that and drew his sword and killed Archimedes. This was not received well, and I do believe that soldier died for killing Archimedes. Uh, but obviously he didn't know that it, he was looking at the great Archimedes, um, and he let his hot-headed temper uh, get the best of him, ended up killing one of the world's greatest mathematicians uh, that we've ever known. Um, yeah, this is just a really wonderful and beautiful property uh, of the parabola that uh, with light, it can be shown from here and then focused everywhere you want it to go, or you can reverse that process. Capture light and have it re- uh, or concentrate here in this focus and create a beam that you could light a ship on fire. I want to talk about one more uh, incarnation of this kind of thing. Have you, if you've ever been to the Bunker Hill Monument, excuse me, the Bunker Hill Monument uh, down in Boston, if you climb that tower up into that little circular room, I haven't proven this, uh, but I am quite certain that that room is approximately the shape of an actual parabola. The next time you go, stand in the very center of that room uh, on the grate, and your head will be approximately in the focus point. And if you just say something, you're going to have a really weird sonic sensation where your voice is going to reverberate back on you, and it's going to feel and sound really, really weird. And essentially, what I believe is happening is... Uh, so this is the room, if you're standing here, when you speak, all of the sound that's coming out of your mouth is going out and it's bouncing off of the parabolic walls of the room, bouncing straight down, right, just like we saw here. But because the ground is pretty flat, it is then bouncing back up off of the ground. And heading right back to your ear. But because, uh, you know, the sound of speed is constant uh, and these distances are going to be a little bit, you know, longer or shorter, uh, it's going to kind of come back in an echoey way. Um, so the next time you're down in Boston, if you can go up into uh, the Bunker Hill Monument and stand in the center of that room and just say something, you're going to feel this really bizarre sonic phenomenon. Um, and it, I do believe it is because uh, that room is the shape of a paraboloid. All right, so enough on that. Uh, let's get to just one more piece of information and then we'll call it a day.